So this was the case at the instant the system was released from rest at time t is equal to zero. And the question says, after one second, block one was stopped and then immediately released. So let's visualize the situation here. I'm going to make some addition in my figure. Therefore, I draw a horizontal line to the top edge of this pulley block system that I have shown here. And since we found the accelerations of both the blocks, let me consider the motion of block one. In the first second of motion, we have got this formula, V is equal to U plus AT. So for block one, we might write the velocity V1 at the end of one second, that is given by its initial velocity plus acceleration into time. Putting the values, E1 is equal to zero, acceleration of block one that was positive downwards, 1.96 meter per second square into time, that is 1.00 second. We are having here velocity of block one at T is equal to 1.00 second is 1.96 meter per second. Once we have the velocity of block one at one second, it means since the two blocks are connected by an inelastic massless string and the string is taut until now. Therefore, in a case of constraint motion, if block one is going downwards with the velocity of V1 of 1.96 meter per second, the velocity for block two at the same instant, T is equal to one second, this must be having the same magnitude, but it is upwards. That is V2 is equal to minus 1.96 meter per second, isn't it? Let me draw my figure here to describe the second situation. We have got one more figure here now, to situation at the end of one second. This time here, T is equal to 1.00 second. And as we just now found out, at t is equal to one second, block one is going downwards and block two is going upwards with the same speed because the constrained motion. This v1 is 1.96 meter per second and this is v2 that is minus 1.96 meter per second by my sign convention. I'm sticking to this sign convention here. So that was the case. Before the block one was stopped and then immediately released. Now, if somebody holds this block one for a moment and then releases it, what happens? This block loses its existing velocity and once again starts moving downwards from rest. Isn't it? Read the question properly. Block one was stopped and then immediately released. That is, without any loss of time, at the same time of 1.00 second, this velocity of this block one is lost. And once again, it is starting to move downwards with a velocity of zero meter per second. But that is not the case with block two. Block two, this is of course the red color block two and this is blue color block one. Because of inertia of motion, because it was not held by hand, block two continues to move upwards with the same velocity of minus 1.96 meter per second. So that is the effect of holding the block one momentarily. Block one starts moving again downwards with a velocity of zero. And because of inertia of motion, block two keeps on moving upwards with a velocity of minus 1.96 meter per second. Now the effect of this is, since block one is now moving slower and block two is now moving faster, this string no longer remains taut. And this is no longer a case of constrained motion. You understand the moment this string becomes slack, not taut. It does not exert any force of tension on either block one or block two and therefore, the moment this block is held and released, block one, for some time, block one and block two travel only the force of gravity as freely falling bodies 
and that condition prevails for some more time. So we are supposed to find out that interval over which the string remains slack. Both block 1 and block 2 travel as freely falling bodies so that we can find out the time at which the string becomes taut again. I shall call for convenience the duration, the interval over which both the blocks travel as freely falling bodies so that the string remains slack, that internally calling it to be the time for free falling motion. This is the free fall motion for both the blocks. In abbreviation, I might call it as TFF, FF standing for free fall and TFF is standing for the interval over which the blocks travel as freely falling bodies until the string becomes taut again. So let me write it clearly here that after the block 1 is held momentarily and released, we are talking about that scenario, of course the time remains t is equal to 1.00 second because the block is held only momentarily. After the block 1 is held, held momentarily and then released, this time is also t is equal to 1.00 second. But this time, velocity of the block 1 starting afresh, that becomes 0 meter per second, while v2 because of inertia of motion is going upwards with a speed of 1.96 meter per second. Understand this. So allow me to add one more figure here, the subsequent situation. As you can see, this was at one second, this string becomes slack and both the blocks are moving as freely falling bodies. And then for a duration equal to TFF, this string remains slack and both blocks are moving as freely falling bodies. And then again, suppose at the time, T is equal to 1.00 second plus T free fall. This string is becoming taut once again. So comparing this second and third figure, I might show that suppose the block 1, this has traveled downwards to a distance of H over this interval of TFF. And it is the same interval this block 2 must also, well, just let me adjust my figure. I'm talking about this height gained by this block 2. This height also has to be h only, isn't it? If the string has to be taught again, that means that over this free fall motion, the block 1 must have traveled the same distance downwards as the distance traveled by block 2 upwards, then only the string can become taut once again. So keeping in mind that the distances traveled by the blocks 1 and 2 must be the same h, one in the downward direction, one in the upward direction during this free fall motion, we'll find out the value of TFF and hence the time at which the string becomes taut again. That is the way of approaching the problem. Give me a moment to rearrange my writing because I want to complete my calculation on this page only. Hello students, you got a glimpse of our video lessons through this small lecture. We have hundreds of lectures like this one covering various topics of advanced school level and intermediate physics in our website. They are exhaustive and often accompanied by elaborate diagrams to make concepts even clearer. They are taught with passion and sometimes with a bit of fun. So at the end of the lesson, you have a commanding grip on the subject and you are ready for the board and competitive exams. Subscribe at physicsacademyonline.com to access video lectures of highest standard on various topics of physics.